How would you like to make six figures just off of your personal sphere of influence? Uh, that's one of the best ways to gain clients. It's one of the easiest ways to gain clients. And on this podcast, episode 46 of Mega Real Estate Talk, we'll break down how you can make six figures just from your sphere of influence. Let's go. You're listening to Mega Real Estate Talk with Jared Davis and Galen Parker, your source for an honest, insightful look into Central Virginia's real estate market. Combined, Jared and Galen have over 20 years sales experience, as well as hundreds of testimonials from clients past and present who rely on them for advice and assistance when buying and selling homes in today's incredibly hot and competitive real estate market. And now, your host, Jared Davis and Galen Parker. I am Jared Davis. And I am still Galen Parker. And we run the Davis group with exp realty and richmond this is mega real estate talk if you haven't already i hope you like and subscribe to our videos if you're listening on youtube uh, if you're listening on your favorite podcast station network hopefully you're subscribed to that as well whatever the sound that is like when i hear the youtube i'm like bing 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 like you're i think that that sounds right Maybe sure. that's the podcast. I, don't know. I like it. All right. If you're looking to grow a team, if you're growing your business, if you're looking to get into real estate, please reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you. We would love to partner with you no matter where you are in the country. We have uh, partnered with agents in over 11 states now. So we would love to uh, have the opportunity to chat with you and see what we can do to help you grow your business. Can we just talk about the uh, crazy up of listening and yeah comments and <clears throat> yeah, like yeah. it's just like in podcasts just, this podcast is going great this channel we got another channel living in richmond virginia that is uh more buyer seller focused you can check that out if you're looking to build youtubes out uh but yeah we've got i mean eleven thousand hits on one of our videos pros and cons which you know may not sound viral but you know over the course of a couple months i did the math the other day it adds up to like 40 watches a day or something like that. You know, we tell our agents they need to have 35 to 50 real estate conversations a week, and we're essentially having about 50 to 100 conversations a, a day uh, just on our YouTube uh, platforms just for buyer sellers. So, yeah, and we we're going to be going. I feel like every year, we're like, we're going to go heavy in YouTube. And like every year, it's like, we're going even heavier in YouTube. So, it's, it's awesome. We've got, um, we've getting clients under contract on, you know, clothes from YouTube. Yeah, we got so multiple you under contract clothes already in the last month or two off of YouTube. So, I mean, that's, that's a big focus of our business. Maybe we'll do a podcast on that at some point, how to grow YouTube into, uh, how to make six figures off of YouTube. Mm, yeah. We'll, we'll tell you all the things that we did wrong in the being so you don't have to. Yeah. This is six figures on sphere, obviously. We're talking about sphere of influence today. We'll How do, you doing today? I'm good, man. I um trying to think. Oh, my house got delayed because of windows. Mm. Um we Maybe no windows in the house? Just go like something just like windowless, kinda just Mediterranean? Uh, kinda, yeah, just open air. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we ordered windows back in April. It, we're now, I mean, I don't know when this podcast will hit, but we're we're in fall now. We'll, let's just throw it like that. And uh, they told me two weeks ago that it was going to be two weeks, and now they're saying three weeks as of this week now. So I think it's going to be next year before I'm in the house now. So it is what it is. But what? Uh, Sorry. No. Yeah, no, I was like one good, good thing that's uh, that's really cool. We are now coming to you uh, on the other side of our trip to Las Vegas. Ooh, yeah, Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, we raced cars. Ah, yeah, Jared, I was going to say, I was like, Jared, did we do anything uh, fun? How, how was uh, that in Las Vegas? I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Speed Vegas. Shout out to Speed Vegas. If you're ever in, if you're ever in Vegas. Vegas. If you're ever uh, so late, Mike's just late to the board. He's, I need the board over here. Anyway, you just, yeah, if, you're ever in Speed, if you're ever in Vegas, produces. Jared, talk to him. Yeah, so Speed Vegas is a racetrack out there, and they have pretty much any supercar that you could think of that mm -hmm. you'd want to drive, and they run at five laps minimum, and then you can you can go up from there. Uh, I mean, you could you could pay as little as I think like three hundred bucks maybe for some of the slower, cheaper stuff, but yeah. even the the really fast stuff. I mean, we drove a four eight eight competition Ferrari race car, and we drove a Lamborghini Huracan STO, which is their race version. It's a six hundred thousand dollar car. I think they charge you what maybe like. 500 bucks to like drive it five laps, something like that. But my bill is like seven something, but I did oh, like seven. Okay. It was, it was, you know, it's funny. A hundred dollars a lap. Something like that. Yeah. I think I calculate it was like 98 bucks a lap. Whoa. But, but if you're, if you're, if you're fast, then you get less time for your money. So, so the thing is, <laughs> the slower you drive, the more money. Just make, you make get. the driver who's with you. Like, just like, he's like, could you speed up? You're like, nope. Like, I'm yeah, yeah. Enjoy every, take every, this every, turn. Like really, really slow. So you got I, your money's worth in the course.
Tour event last year. <laughs> I was like, this is funny. I did he not get my money. He looked worth like he was merging year. on to I ninety five last year. Like, just like, oh, I'm gonna wait. My, I'm gonna hand signals up the window <laughs> coming in. I'm like, let me back merge. All right, here's the thing. I, as you guys know, Jared is a car guy. I am not a car guy. I, I race cars for fun. That's my hobby. I'm a music guy. I love music, but he listens I, as to I, music as his hobby. As I told Jared, <laughs> I felt like. Uh, after Speed Vegas was like, I get it. I mean, <laughs> I I was in the uh, Lamborghini Huracan STO 631 horsepower, and I was driving that, that thing like I stole it. Yeah. Full throttle, go ahead. I'll shift. I'll shift. A break, hard, down shift one. One more time. Down shift again. Release the brake now. Back to the throttle. Connect now to the green, accelerate more. And the bottom first, stay right. Let's go accelerate. More throttle to the right. Now break to the right. Break harder. Right side. Next time. And, and they like you. my my, my instructor it. was like, man, you're you really get into it. He's like, you're enjoying it. He's like, you having fun? I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, you know, we'll probably send Mike some uh, send some of the footage so that they can edit in. Should I do um, the? Should I send him the one of the guy yelling at me in the Lamborghini yes, the whole time, that's or hilarious. the one in the Ferrari where the guy was like, this is great. So last year I had a I have my instructor. I was like, not a big fan of this guy. It wasn't much fun. Yada yada. yada. And then this year you got a totally different guy, and that guy he like resented the fact that you drove fast. He was like, this is a driver driving experience, not a racing school. And I was like, if you don't shut up while I drive, I'm going to break your Are nose. Are you serious? I mean, yeah, yeah, it was it was very awkward. Uh, and here, to that statement, I'm like, it's not a driver experience. Like, if it was a driver experience, we wouldn't be on a racetrack. I was like, are you timing this? Yeah. Do you keep all of the times in a database? Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm going to post a really good time because I do this for fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we what? had a blast. Sixth overall time ever in the Ferrari, even with all the race car drivers in the system. Him. Wow. 40th overall out of every car on the track in history, 35,000 people. I was like 200th wow. in my car. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't too happy about it. I was thrilled with my. With my. <laughs> like I got out and he was just like, because like Jared walked away and I was like standing there, just like talking to the other truck. He's like, I mean, you know, he knows how to drive, but I mean, here's the thing. Like, he needs to get. Blah, 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 blah. And then he turned around and saw me standing there and he was just like, you, uh, you guys have a good, good day. I was like, don't talk about my boy because. I, we'll, I did. We'll bury you in the woods. I will say I pulled in, and there was literally smoke coming out of the front of the <laughs> Hurricanes brake ducts. <laughs> it is like so. Seriously, if you go, it'll be fun. I mean, you'll enjoy it. For a guy like me, I mean, I was just like, just tearing it up, like just giggling like a little kid. That's great. Um, yeah. I drove the uh, the S four this <laughs> this week, and it was just like on the like two eighty eight, just like having flashbacks of being in Vegas, and I was like, and I'm like, oh wait, sorry. I don't think I think the guy was just not you. Like I think he's. Yeah. Used to like sure. people coming slow, and he's trying to make them go faster and like teach them. He's the he's authority. Yeah. I was like, no, like I know how to drive. You just need to tell me when to break. Like at one point, I was just like, am I supposed to break here? He's like, oh yeah, it's a turn. And I'm like, what? Oh. I'm waiting for your instruction, you idiot. <laughs> You're my co-pilot. Yeah, and then like I slid the car out, and he was just like, please don't slide the car. Please don't. Please. Like I mean, he was just. How old was this guy? Uh, he was younger. He was like a kid. Twenty seven ish. Twenty eight. Twenty seven. Your mic just kicked out for a second, and I think it's good now. Okay, just lose. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they were they were young, but I mean, most of the instructors are like race car drivers. So last year, like I came in and I told them like they're like, "Who's driving the fast ones?" And I was like, "Well, I think that's me probably," because uh, I had like the seven hundred horsepower stuff last year, and then um, that was before they had the race cars. And they were like, "Well, have you ever driven a car like this?" I like, "Well, I own a GT3." And they're like, oh, okay. Like, have you ever actually taken it to the track? Like, I go to VIR. It's like my home track. And they're like, dude, I've done like two thousand miles on VIR. So we like hit it off right away. They were like, this guy. I was like, are you like a like a legit race car driver? Did you do stuff? And like, he kind of like didn't have a bunch to say. And then I'm like, well, you know, what about the last track that you? Know, where he was like, well, I wasn't at the last track last when we were there last year. Like, I've only been at this track working. And I'm like, are you? He's like, I just started. How much real experience do you have at this? But the, Kia. the guy that we had in this, the Ferrari race car, he was great. And I kept asking Luigi. him. Because, like, the brake markers, they have brake markers on the track like any other race track. And I'm just like, all right, these are there for, like, new people, right? Like, do I, where do you really have to slow down? He's like, well, if you're cooking it, like, you really should start slowing down at the brake marker. And I was like, okay. And I just kept, like, hitting the brake marker and, and laying in. And he's like, you're just breaking. You're just giving it too much brake. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, we're just... I can go past the brake marker. Like, we're fine. You know what right. I mean? By the last thing, I've got the video of the Ferrari I'll send you in the race car. I told him, I was like, I'm losing time braking. And he was like, you want to brake later? I was like, I want to brake so much later. And he's like, okay. So we came into the front straight on the last lap, and there's three brake markers on the front straight. It's uh -huh. like three, two, one. And it was just like three, two, one. And then like another like 200 feet past that. And then he was like, all right, brake. He's like, more brake. And I was like, okay. And I just like <laughs> laid in. And like slid into turn. I was like, that's what we should be doing here. That's how this is supposed to work. 
And he was like, man, this is great. He was like, you're killing it. I was like, yeah, thank, that guy thank was you. Awesome. He was, yeah. So if you're in Vegas, go to Speed Vegas. It's um, uh, We were in Vegas for like a real estate conference. It was all great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the best speaker? Uh, we had this guy, I don't remember his name is Nick something, but he was born with one arm and a finger, no left arm and no legs. I'm looking it up. And he became a motivational speaker and he's just killing it. He works for Tony Robbins and he was great. He was the Nick Santa Natasso. Santa Natasso. Whatever. He was good. Look him up guys. It's definitely worth you looking up. Nick. S A N T O N A S T A S S O. Yeah, so. super cool guy. Sounds and then Tony Robbins' son runs Success Coaching, which is owned by EXP. So um, Tony Robbins' son is like always at the events and speak. I didn't even realize it was Tony Robbins' son until this event. I was like, wait, his last name's Robbins. He kind of looks like Tony. And then I like Googled it. And I was like, oh, it's Tony Robbins' son. Um, what about the uh, TLC guy or the. Uh, TLC. Oh, oh, no, uh, HD. Oh, uh, 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 shit. what's that guy's name? I'm not a fan of him, but I mean, he was fine. I mean, I'm not not a fan. I, I shouldn't say it like that. I'm not not a fan of him. I just wasn't like, oh my god. No, no, I know, but I like. How did he speak? Or Tariq, like, Tariq, 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 Tariq. Tariq? Tariq? Uh, he was great. He was great. You know, I, I like stuff like that because mm-hmm. it's it really reminds people of the power of our brokerage. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, they still have no concept. They're like, oh, EXP, you guys are just a little. I'm like, yeah, the, that's why all these like major stars, major real estate players are like getting involved in, you know, trying taking a taking a piece of our brokerage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a nice little credence to be like, hey, yeah, we're a tiny little brokerage. But that's why like all these people are like, oh, wait, this is a crazy good business decision for me. So, yeah. And on that note, cool before deep talk. dive, we're now the number two producing brokerage in Richmond, only behind one other, which we will probably pass in the next year or two. Um, just past 86,000 agents worldwide. Killing love it. it. Love, love it. it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All Time right, Mike. for that deep dive. Deep dive us. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty, and we're in. So, how to make six figures plus on your sphere of influence. The reason we wanted to do this today is because your sphere is one of the easiest ways that you can gain business. Yep. It's one of the most powerful ways to get business. Yet it's one of the biggest things that agents just neglect. Facts. They neglect it so hard, it's ridiculous. And I think a lot of it has to do, they're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. And so they feel uncomfortable. I always think about the whole like cut code knife thing. It's like sell okay. to your right. friends and family and everyone's like, I don't want to go sell to my friends and family. Some of the most successful people who are selling those things, okay. you know what they did? They would have people over to their house where they mm-hmm. would make a meal. Mm-hmm. And let's say they were going to like shave or cut a turkey and they would take the knives out and just demonstrate. They wouldn't be like, hey, do you want to buy mm-hmm. these? They mm-hmm. would just show them. And people were like, man, that knife is just cutting. The-. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, these are these are great. I, I just got these. I'm, I'm actually working for them and selling them. That's how the big guys sold the business. Well, think about that in real estate. If you called, like, your, your friend from school and be like, hey, so I'm selling real estate now. You know anyone who wants to? Like, they're going to be like, oh, okay, great. But if you're having natural conversations with them, if you're throwing events, mm-hmm. um, think about, like, who you go to college with. It's like. I told Brandon on our team, he is a VMI. VMI. Mm-hmm. I said, well, Brandon, every time VMI has a football game, why don't you just send something out and be like, hey, guys, let's all meet at a local sports bar at 3 o'clock and watch the game, right? Does that has, VMI play on TV? They do. They wow. do. I, I, mean, it's not, I don't know sports. Yeah, guys, so they, they do. Cool. But it's like any team, whatever you, you have. So I'm like, just engage <laughs> people like that. You don't go in there and be like, all right, so who's got some referrals for me? <laughs> yeah. No, it's like if you if you engage your sphere. And so we're going to talk about ways in which you can do that. That It's a natural way. There's some thought that goes into that Jared and I have been doing because, you know, so many agents are like, oh, man, I just can't get anyone on the phone. Uh, no one's answering. It's just nothing but renters. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I was like, so why don't you call the people that you know will answer your phone? Yep. Who already know you. They're they're more than a warm audience. They're already fans of yours. Yep. So your sphere of influence really should encompass your friends, mm-hmm. your family, and then any kind of past client, right? Once, Absolutely. Once they're your past client, they're now in your sphere. So if they're in your sphere... Are you actually going to continue to follow up with them? So what are some ways that we can do that? Well, the one of the things when you think about your sphere, too, is you want to think about everything we're about to talk about. Are you using your sphere to also meet their sphere? There you go. 
right? So let's say you want to get into high-end real estate. You know, maybe there's some job titles. So maybe you get somebody that is a CEO of a company or you get somebody that's maybe a doctor or a lawyer or whatever the industry field is down where you guys are. Maybe there's a big company like Capital One is headquartered here, so you have a lot of high up execs there. Altria is another company that's out of Richmond, right? When you lock into somebody like that as a client of yours, do you keep the main the relationship knowing that they are also associated with everybody else at that company or other doctors or other high level individuals? See, I find that a lot of people say, well, I don't have a strong sphere. Maybe they're young, so they're like, my friends are still in college, or they're not buying houses yet. Or maybe they say, well, I didn't grow up in wealth, or I didn't go to college. Like, I didn't go to college. I didn't grow up with wealth. I didn't do any of these things. I had to build the sphere. But as I started meeting people that I knew this is the person I want to do business with, as you start locking down better clients, you want to make sure that you do a lot of these things for them but you're also trying to make sure you're getting through to their sphere because you want their referral business and their their continuing business and their family's business. And what I've learned is the best way to do that is like so you, you invite them to something, just the person, your direct contact with something. Okay. Have a good time. They will in turn generally invite you to something. Yeah. Make sure you go. Yeah. Because they're inviting you, but also their other people. And those are the people you want to meet. So you got to kind of set it up. Yeah. Um, and it's you've got to give to get. So you can't just be like, man, I hope they invite me to something. Hey, next time you have a party, invite me over. Well, you should invite me over. And I was like, no, invite them to something. Yeah, that's a great that's example. That's how it works. Well, it, you know, it's funny you say that. So they have a really big um, foundation ball at a country club next week. And I got in not because necessarily I got an easy invite, but because a past client of mine, I invited them to a client appreciation party. They weren't able to make it, but they brought up to me later, hey, we know obviously you like to do, you know, these high end you know, clients, obviously it's a good sphere. Good. If you want to get in front of these people, we're having this event. Would you want to sponsor it? So yes, it cost me money to do that, but it's great. I Sometimes mean, it costs money guys, but, but here's the thing. It's, a, it's a black tie event. You know, we'll tux up. We'll get to go hang out with a sphere of people. That's like the people, at least in my city that I want to be around, right. That I want to build relationships with. So Galen makes a great point. Invite them first. So client appreciation parties are great we do one for our team every year. Uh, like, you know, our whole team obviously invites all their clients, not for the team. But uh, <laughs> if you're a solo agent, you should be doing something at least once a year for your best clients. We invite literally anybody we've ever sold a house to almost. I mean, even if it's awkward, like sometimes I think, man, it's been five years, six years. I never hear from them when I send them. I still send them an invite because at some point, you know, who knows? I have actually had some people reach out like three or four years later and be like, I don't even know if this person remembers me. Like, I'm not with the same company anymore. Do they realize that? Do they know who's sending it? And then I'll get a reply that's like, I'm going to try to make it, you know? So so you just, you got to stay in touch with these people, right? I know if you've been an agent long enough, you've seen a house come on market that you sold before, and you're like, how did I get that listing? Why wouldn't they call me? But the flip side is if you've never talked to them since you sold them the house, why would they call you? Yeah, you're You expect to. them to remember you and you didn't remember them at all. You're just like, thanks for my transaction. Thanks for my money. I'll see you later. That's like, what they think of you at yeah. that point. I, I thought it was really cool. So at our client appreciation party in September, there were some surprises there of like people who like came and I was just like, oh my goodness, you did come. Um, I've, I've also learned to invite referral <clears throat> parties, like people who like, maybe they didn't do it. I've got clients who didn't do business with me, but they referred me business yep. just because they liked me yeah. and they met me. And I know whenever they sell their houses, they will use me over their past agent because their past agent, they haven't seen. I, I said that, uh, I had that conversation with someone that, that evening. He was just like, you know, he's like, my realtor, he's like, I haven't talked to him since we moved yeah. in. And I'm just like, that's a shame. I was like, you've talked to me way more. I was like, this is your second client appreciation party. And I was like, I've done business from you Every year, like so, these two years, like yeah. each year, I've done something with him, and it was just because he was like, "Yeah, I like uh, Galen." He was like, "This is my guy." My, he was like, "I've done two of his neighbors." I've sold multiple houses this year. When I go to look up the address and see, like, "Hey, let me pull the past sale," it's been within like a year and a half to two years, and I think it's been less than two years, and you've already forgotten this person. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What did you do?" <laughs> yeah, it's like total stranger. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely nuts to me, right? So client appreciation parties. Now you may say, well, I, I don't make enough money to invite sure. all these people out, yada, yada, yada. You're still wrong. Do it. I don't really care. Put on a credit <laughs> card, invite 10 people. 10 you will get money. It. For, you yeah, will get it back. Do it, do it regardless. Me. But let, let's say you're like, I need something cheaper. Uh, dinners and happy hours are another great invite thing, right? You're not in it to pitch anybody. You're not in it to 
sell them on anything. You're literally just being friends. That's what you're trying to do, right? I have a client that is a friend of mine now. He started as a client, but you know, we ride motorcycles together and he's just a great dude. And it's funny because I I like had been at his house before and like got a call and when I answered they were like what are you doing and I think I was like oh I'm I'm, I'm I don't know where I maybe we weren't at this we were somewhere but I'm like oh I'm out with a client of mine and now like he gets offended because he's like uh, wait seriously I, I'm your like aren't we friends <laughs> I'm in the friend zone yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm in the client zone he wants to be friend you know and I'm like no you are my friend it's, it's like I think it's just like a mental thing you know what I mean like I just think like anytime anybody calls me I'm just like typically working so I'm just like oh, I'm with a client but in reality like no I'm hanging out with my buddy but. You know, we had dinner together last night. Shout out to Robert. He's like one of my favorite people. He's li- And he listens to the show. Yeah, he's awesome. He and subscribes they're... to our YouTube. He's amazing. But like he is, yeah. he's like a good, good friend now. And he would be like one of the prime examples of a sphere of influence person that's like, man, I can't imagine like if I had just sold him a house and not stayed in touch. Like, no, he's great. Like we're good friends. We ride motorcycles. He invites me to their poker nights with Capital One. And, you know, uh, it's just great. You just, you want to be in the room with everybody and you don't want people to think, Oh, that was a nice transaction. You want people to think, man, I really would love to hang out with this guy when this is all said and done. And, and like, he's a perfect example of that. So no. like, I want to hang out with you all the time, you know, cause we're friends now. Right. I feel like that's like, uh, how I built <laughs> just like my entire book of business was just being like, all right. It was like, yeah, you're, you started as a client and now we're at the movies together. And now I'm buying your kids. You know, Girl Scout oh, cookies. Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. I mean, oh. now it's like we're like we're hanging out, we're going to dinners. I'm shooting off recommendations for restaurants you go to. It's like it's like you just. I'm like you. Little did you know when you called that line that you just inherited like a family member because I'm yeah. like well, I'm hanging out. I'm coming to all the things. And sometimes they're surprised when I remember things. I'm just like, oh my goodness, it's like, hey, what time is uh, Blake's uh, football game? I'm gonna try to swing by there. Like, what? What? Yeah, you yeah I, I'm terrible with names sometimes. Like I just, I know I can see the face. Yeah, I remember, for. I remember what yeah. we did and stuff. True. But it's like when someone comes to me out of you know Starbucks or like, hey, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't remember your name. I like, never say that. I'm just like, what is going on? Well, buddy? no, I do. Yeah. I play that, I but play I'm saying I, feel, I hug them. I see people in public on a weekly basis that know me that I don't know them on a weekly basis. I see people that are like, yeah. hey, Jared, I'm like, hey, you. How's yeah. how's everything? How's the hey general family that you have somewhere? <laughs> how's the estimated three point two children that you? Um, how's the job that you? Crazy weather, work? huh? Yeah. How's, the, how's the method of employment that you <laughs> currently <laughs> enjoy? It's it's gotten real awkward <laughs> lately. I mean, it, it, I've had to, uh, like it, it almost ha- at a celebrity uh, status, you know, where people just kind of want to. Well, like- I am, sometimes I am like, did you just are we just friends on Facebook and you've seen my stuff? Like, I mean, we had a guy. Uh, shout out to Phil. <laughs> Phil as an agent with Compass, and he ran into us in Tejas. Uh, Texas, and we just like your hey, realtor's favorite very, realtor, yeah, best friend team up. And I was like, "Are we friends?" And he was just like, "Nope." And I was like, "How do I like? How do you? Know? I see your stuff, but I'm like, I don't know who you are." So I friend requested him, and then he hung out with us for like the rest of the night. And then he but came it was like out a perfect example week? of somebody that was like, "I don't know you. You're talking yeah. to me, but I, I ha- I'm happy about it." But like, I, I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, "Can you tell me who you are, please?" Isn't that amazing though? <laughs> Oh, it's great. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. I mean, it would be really weird to actually be a it's really It's really cool because it's like, to me, it just reaffirms the fact that Jared and I were using social media like way better than most, the average person. We're doing it correctly. It's like sometimes you see someone that you're friends with on Facebook and you're not going to stop and talk to them. You're just going to keep going. But like, they feel comfortable enough to like come over and be they like, know you. hey, what's going on? And I'm like, what's up, brother? That's what's great about YouTube, even for buyer sellers, right? Because this is our agent, our agent training. And same thing as agents come on board with us with the EXP, typically they're like, oh yeah, we know you great because we watched all your videos. And that's fantastic. But then on the buy sell side, it's the same thing. They're reaching out and they're like, "We love you." And I'm like, "Could you give me your name, please, so that we can where you live? Please, where sign what do you want to buy?" NDA before we continue, <laughs> it's this great though. But we love it. Please keep reaching out to us, strangers. Let's not be strangers. And now some of these things are stuff that you have to put money to. It, and if you don't have money, as Jared said, invite him to dinners. The VMI example is a good one, where it's just like just invite people out to mutual beneficial things that you know you're not paying for their meal. But you guys are just spending time together watching something. And the more you do stuff like that, that is how you're going to capitalize. And I should clarify this, that, like, if you're doing this, I really hope you're genuine with it. (laughs) Because to me, like, I actually am hanging out with them genuinely and want to be friends with everybody and want to hang out with everybody and want to have good relationships. If you are one of those agents that doesn't want to associate with other people or agents and you're just like, hey, let's do a happy hour, like... 
no one's going to want to be around you, right? I mean, I genuinely have friendships with my clients. That That is how it should work, right? If it starts as a client base, it should end as a friendship, and they're just going to call you for real estate later as a bonus because you're their friend, right? I mean, they want to be around you anytime they can. When real estate comes up, they're going to spread the word. That's so. a good point. Yeah, be, be genuine with it. So... Uh, one of the things that you can do is also gifts of some kind. So I have a couple different things as far as ways to contact. Um, Galen, you had mentioned, I remember things like football games or this or that. Um, I think about things like what was the house anniversary? When did they buy their home? Mm -hmm. Right. And then maybe if it's like your, if it's a big house or if it's a big client, you know, maybe every year they're going to get on their house anniversary. Say, yeah. Hey man, can you believe Five years ago, I helped you buy this thing, right? Here's, a, here's a nice bottle night. of whiskey. Here's whatever, right? Uh, we do pie drops towards the end of the year a lot mm -hmm. of times. Um, that always turns into business, and it's so cheap, $6 a pie. Uh, a lot of brokers will, will, you know, or teams or whatever, they'll have them at the office, and they make the clients come by and pick them up. I'm not saying that doesn't them. work, but if you called me and you're like, hey, can you drive to the other side of town and pick or up a six pie, pie for me? I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, so, so I, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, donate my pie to charity. Yeah. So, but, so we actually hand drop them at the houses and it takes a long time. I almost killed myself the first year we did it. Cause I did like a hundred pies personally. It took me like two or three days. I was like, Oh my God, why did I do this? But the reality is like almost every night I was getting home at like 1 a.m. Cause like the last couple houses I'd get there at like 10, 11 and I would go to drop and they'd be like, you want to come in for a drink? And you're just like, I I guess. Sure. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's what I'm here for, right, is sphere of influence drop, right? So uh, pie drops, uh, me and Galen, shout out to a company called Client Giant. We just started with them. Um, they do. <laughs> i got to tell you something real quick. I'm sorry to derail you. You always it's, derail me. Go ahead. something Owen said to me about Shut pie. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm sorry. I just okay. got to say it. Go for it. He goes, you know, when someone said, you're a piece of work, <laughs> he goes to me the other day, he goes, you're a piece of pie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I just Eddie, hey, Eddie, can you just <laughs> cut that out? Are, no, are you, you know listening? what? Hey, Eddie, if you're listening, leave that in because I want people to know what we go through. Yeah. I know there's guys like Robert listening to this. Robert's like, like, can you just tell Mike to shut up a little bit? And I'm just like, okay, I'll, so I'll try funny. to bring it up. Pulleys is what I do. Hey, you know what, Mike? You're pulleys. a piece of pie. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bring it up you're right a key now. Lime slice. This is why Robert says talk less. <laughs> All right, uh, but Client Giant, they do quarterly gifts. You pay $100 a client, so it's not necessarily the cheapest thing, but when you break it down, it's 25 bucks a quarter per gift, yeah. right? So you think about that. Every single quarter, they're going to get a gift from you, personalized with a card, with your name on it, and you, it's do nothing, right? So it's for, Set it and forget it. Yeah. yeah, and I am a set it and forget it guy. Delegate and elevate, that is the name of my game because as Galen knows, I am not reliable for anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I have a... He is, like, he is reliable with a ton of stuff. There's just certain... There's some. There's a tiny blind spots he's not good at. <laughs> I, mean, I just have a problem with overall everything in my life to do anything. As Galen will attest, I'm the worst human being ever. I'm like, no, 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 my boy's good. He's just... He's got to go I'm just... Off. You know, it's like I have too much going on and yeah, and, sure. and I think if I had to come up with a gift, like sometimes... So, so Galen's wife works for us. She's our transaction coordinator, Kat Parker. She's fantastic. And Kat makes it a, a, ha a habit of at least once or twice a month sending a text message to me and thankfully Galen too because she knows that I'm probably barely going to read it. But it's it's like, hey, I got a great gift idea or this or that. And I'm always like, do it. Do it. Whatever. Like, just take me out of it because anytime I go in it, it's just really bad because if I've got to plan this, then I got to figure out how many to order and then I can figure out how to <laughs> drop them. It just doesn't work. So Kat always like messages me. I'm like, I don't want to be involved in whatever you and Jared are doing. I'm like, he's going. I, was, I always say to her, I'm like, why do you even ask? Just I was do like, it. you're going to have an idea. He's going to say, do it. And then you're going to look like, but it costs him like, you've got a company credit card. Just, just do it. I don't it. care. If it makes us money in business, great. I use I'll an app my called Stuff. Stuff? Yeah. And it's a virtual assistant. But they're actually really, really good. And so I needed to send out something. And I just gave him the budget that's on the file, card on file. Yeah. Said I needed to be like 75 or under or whatever. Yeah. And they just sent it. They just sent a gift. Who they send it to? A client. Hey, so, did you, you ever get gifts from Mike? Mm -mm. I don't remember. I don't remember. No. No, most I of our, pay for meals. Most, most of our vendors. <laughs> Who's? Most of our vendors. Wait, he said meals multiple. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, that'd be more than I one. Really go I go back and forth. I can't, Most I'm, of the time when you're filming, you're like, hey, get me four tacos. That's because I'm, I'm trying to get things done at the same time. I remember the last time. <laughs> Mike's like, here's some old donuts that I had, like, from a undisclosed <laughs> amount of time on the table. Eat them. I'm like, all right. 
<laughs> Anyways, the app is actually really responsive it's and it's good. It's, it's a stuff client good. giant. There's another one. What's the one that you have to have a certain amount of people in the area sign up for? Oh, I, is yeah, it like Leo I yeah, 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 yeah. or is it? I don't know. Why is it some? I don't know. But but that's good because it just takes it off of you, and then you just give them the people. They handle it. They send it out, and then hopefully, you know, over time, quarterly, you start getting getting feedback from your clients. Obviously, Hello. where are we at, Mike? Time wise, oh, thirty minutes. There you go. Dang. I think that's pretty much it. What else do you have? The oh oh, I do have one more. All right. And then if you can think of anything else, let me know. But I think this one is a big one, and it's another place where people fail miserably. Are you using social media to stay in contact with your sphere of influence? See, most agents either have just a business page where their sphere doesn't actually follow, and business pages don't algorithm well in front of people, so they keep all of their business off of their personal page. But then the flip side to that is then on their personal page, or the business gets no personal either. So there's no crossover. So then you just end up with a, a personal page that has nothing business related, so nobody knows what's going on in your life. But then the flip side, if you're all business, no one can actually get to know you as a person. So for me, I like to make sure things are cross-posting. So one, if you look at my social media, you will see our listings, but to be real, nobody gives a crap about that. No one cares that you just listed or sold a house. They don't care at all. <laughs> Say that again for the people. No one gives a crap that you sold a house. I when people are so like, I just sold one this week. And I'm like, great. We sell one a day. It's like, not, no one cares. I no do the, one like, cares. I, we do a social media audit with like people on our team, and I like I make them pull it up in front of me. And sometimes it's just like, house, house, house. Like all these, like, I'm like, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen. They're like, what? Well, I wanted to show them like, yeah, they know. I was like, but you've got to give them something else other than just like graphic of a house. I'm like, this is, just, or it's just like crazy, like quote out of context. If they it's look like, at your this. social media outside of a headshot, do they know what you look like? Do they know your mannerisms? Do they know how you sound on camera? Right? Do they know what your hobbies are? Do they know what you like to do? Do they know who you are as a person? I'm all for posting stats. I will brag about my stats all day long at the end of the year. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like an agent's are like, that's so gaudy. I don't I don't care. Uh, I'm going to post up what we sell, and you'll either give me your congratulations or you can move on if you don't care. Great. Uh, whatever. But overall, I want people to know me. I want people to know Galen. When we put out our videos, best friend team ups and things, we get a flood of people that are just like, we love watching you and Galen do crazy stuff together. Right. Even like, I think even our broker like asked us about a video where we were like dancing in a house while back. I was like, did you ask the owners? Like if you could just like have a, like, and at a that check moment, finger. I slowly put my finger on her lips and said, Shh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's not what, I have what other person's <laughs> jumping in a pool at the end of a listing video. That's it. And, and <laughs> I, I've had so many, yeah, people reading channel now like this is one of the best video tours i've ever it's seen it's gotten right? so funny that like a friend of ours who's with another brokerage she's like a friend and she like hates it at the same time she was like i was somewhere and someone brought up you guys in your video <laughs> that we weren't at and she was like they're best friend team and i was like they're not that cool i'm like why are you such a hater <laughs> i was like why i was like just congratulate us she was like i do celebrate you but she's like i also hate it at the same time because she like, yeah because she knows it works and she knows it's awesome and they can't replicate look you can't duplicate. What is happening right now? Your lawn guy is ridiculous. Does he drive a jumbo jet? I, I swear he cuts Did the house itself. Did he just start itself. the 4RS up? Like, why is it so loud? He's driving on the wall of that <laughs> for a second. Great guy, but he always comes at the wrong time of day. Well, hopefully we don't have the feedback on. We're wrapping up anyway. Very good. So social is, is key, man. Let people know who you are. Reach out to people. Actually comment up on your friend's stuff. That's the other thing. Like, do you actually engage in their post? Yeah. Or do you just expect them to engage in your post? Yeah, I'm just going to post this blind thing and hope everyone likes it. Yeah, say, but I'm not going to like any of my friend's on. stuff or look at any of their stuff or comment on any of their stuff, right? I'm the same way with agents. I love to comment up on agents and celebrate their achievements, right? You want to post your goals? I'm going to throw it out there. Congratulations. This is awesome. Go you, right? Come out to our cocktails for closers. Let's hang out. Let's You're get happy. you it out. big. Yeah, 100%. If you want praise and, and you want you know, recognition and you want views and you want likes and you want comments, give it back to your friends and, and engage with them. It helps the social media algorithms, I think, too, because the people that you engage sure with. you're a real person. Well, yeah. I dialed back on my postings or listings of, like, pictures and stuff like that. It's I've boring. done Because it's like no uh, one bit, cares. everyone's seen them, uh, you know. So. What you, now, should, you, what you should be doing a picture doing, of you at their house, like, you you'd know. Be, yeah, then we see you, and then we'd like to hear Owen just 
dog, dog you. Yeah. Like if you can you're just the worst photographer you just have, ever, you piece of pie. <laughs> yeah, like if you could just have like things your son My dad says. doesn't do anything right now. Yeah, like I Well, he's got his like, own YouTube channel. Yeah, like that's right. Yeah, but that doesn't promote you, but I hope it does make him rich one day. Oh, man, yeah. He puts you in a home. Want to buy me a boat. I love, I love it. it. All right, anything else you can think of? No, social media was my, my big one, and you know, I'm, I'm always tell people, you know, comment out. You've got to buy out the time, though, so it's not like just like, oh, I'll do it. I was like, I have a time of the day, just like anything like call blocking, social media time blocking, where I go in there, I'm like, I start, you know, mathematically almost like, all right, did I talk to them last week? Or I want to do that. I was like, all right, did this two likes on this one? Or like comment here. You know, I just go through the whole thing because I want um, to increase my reach. And then as Jared said, the most important thing is just be sincere, be genuine with it. And it'll pay, it'll pay you back in the end. Yep. Let people get to know you, be their friend, be genuine and reach out to, constantly. I'm bummed that you, like, tell them the thing you always tell people is, like, they, they don't want to be sold, but they want to hang out. Oh, no one wants to be sold, but everyone loves to go shopping with friends. Exactly. The Rock uh, did something the other day where he's like, just be nice, you know? And he was interviewing somebody, or the or interviewer was interviewing, and he's like, hey, I just want to say, you know, thanks for remembering my name. I haven't seen you in four years, and yeah. you acted like I just, you know, we just met the other day. Somebody, you know? Someone the other day was, like, saying something like, I don't want to give too much information about the situation, but they were just like, yeah, and he, they, like, he didn't even like come out to say thank you to stuff about The Rock. And I was just like, The Rock is the nicest celebrity ever. Yeah. And I was like, you pr- you're you probably a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> but I, say, I was like, what, whatever happened, it wasn't his fault. Cause that and if you're the, like, forever, the Rock, you kind of have to be nice because like, it's like, this guy's eight feet tall and he like yeah. for us a house. And it's like, like, he was supposed to come out and say hi to everybody and he didn't. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. What sure. a monster. What did you do? It was like, well, I gave a 1% tip to the guy at the <laughs> restaurant last night because he didn't uh, wash my feet. All right, guys. This has been another episode of Mega Real Estate Talk. We appreciate you watching. Again, if you're on your favorite podcast uh, network, be sure to like, subscribe, download. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what subjects you'd like us to tell you about and help you train on. And again, as always, please reach out to us if we can help you build your business. Uh, Let us... um, let you know what it looks like to partner with us. We would love to partner with you, whether you're local or out of area. Uh, Again, I'm Jared Davis. And I'm Galen Parker. Thanks for listening. If you have a real estate question that you would like to ask Jared or Galen, reach out to them at jared at centralvarealty.com or galen at centralvarealty.com. Who knows? It may even be featured on an upcoming episode. 